Welcome to Faith Builders. My name is Michelle Steele, and I'm so glad to have this opportunity with you. We have been talking about how to pray effectively. We're in a 12-part series called Effective Prayer. My husband, Pastor Philip Steele, and I have been tag-teaming on these teachings. We've, we're already on number nine in this series, so I encourage you, go back and watch the previous lessons because we've covered a lot of ground, and we have al already said a lot of things that you need to establish in your life so that you can have that effective prayer and that confidence when you enter into the presence of God and you're making petitions or you are, are interacting with him. So effective prayer, go back and look on our website. You can find it in our YouTube channel. We want you to be strengthened by these teachings. We have a study guide you can download or you can order uh, the paper book of the study guide and allow these things to become uh, a really uh, proficient in your life, effective in your prayer life. Today, I want to talk about finding God's answers, obtaining answers from heaven. When we are in situations, we don't need to live through these situations just in the dark, just trying to, you know, grasp our way uh, through the situation, but we want to have the light and the answers that God wants us to have, and He wants us to have answered prayer. Our text from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, is where I want to start today. And it begins by saying, above all, taking the shield of faith. We know we're talking about the armor of God here. Taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. It says this, this activity, once we're dressed here in the, the armor of God, that we're supposed to have the activity of prayer. It says when you've got this armor on, uh, then then you're equipped for praying. I want to read from the uh, Bible in basic English as well. The same text says, with prayers and deep desires, making requests at all times in the spirit and keeping watch with strong purpose in prayer for all the saints. That's what we're doing. We're keeping watch with strong purpose. We're utilizing this position that we have in Christ. We are in Christ by the blood of the Lamb of God. We are washed. We are, are made righteous. We are able to enter into the presence of God to receive help, not just for ourselves, but for those in our community, for those in our church family, for those in our immediate family. We are able to to make our petitions known to God. This is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Hallelujah. And we know if he hears us, we have those things that we've asked for. This confidence, he wants us to employ that confidence. He wants us to put it to good use, operate this this opportunity that we have to come into the presence of God and receive change in situations. Don't just let situations go on in the way that they're going or, or let things just adjust to fit whatever the circumstance may be. There are some things we can change in the circumstance. There are things that we can affect change in in our family. You don't have to just let whatever your grandchildren are going through uh, go unchallenged. You can stand against whatever the enemy may be trying to do in their life. You can pray for God. For uh, You can open doors to God through your praying that allow him to bring angelic assistance to them, allows him to bring laborers across their path. There are things that you can do about it in prayer. When you can't do it, you can't do anything about it in the natural, you're not limited. You're not limited to just the natural to do something about it. You've got the ability to enter into the presence of God and to bring your petition, make your petition made known unto him and see him work in your family, in your church family. How it, oh, if the people of God would learn how to pray for their pastor. Imagine 
You got the pastor praying for the people and the people praying for the pastor and the church working in the fullness of all that it can do. And then we're able to see the effectiveness in the, in the church service that God wants to have. Every believer has a part to play in prayer. You can't put that off for somebody else to do all your praying for you. And you can't expect two or three people in the church to do all the praying for the church. And you can't expect the pastor to do all the praying for, no, there's, there's a responsibility for every believer to pray and see the power of God move in that situation. So notice, according to Ephesians 6, the full armored believer is a person prepared for prayer. Why put the armor on and then crawl into the bed and go to sleep? Why, why put the armor on and then go do something just natural or carnal? Put the armor on, keep the armor on, and, and be a person of prayer. It says, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching this prayer of faith, the prayer of agreement, the prayer of supplication, the intercession, the, the praise and worship, the united prayer, the consecration. We've talked about all these different types of prayer, all manner of prayer. They are all uh, employed for us in this consistency of watching in prayer. Let me read to you James chapter 5 and verse 16. It says, confess to one another uh, therefore, your faults, this is the amplified, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, confess them and pray also one for another that you may be healed and restored. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer. I like that because remember up here it says praying always. This continued prayer. This continued prayer, it means throughout the day I'm praying. I'm continually praying. I'm not just praying for 15 minutes in the morning or 30 minutes in the afternoon, 30 minutes at night or, or, or just here and there, but I am continually opening up in prayer to the Lord, praying always. This heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. It's changing things in the spirit realm. It's changing things in the situation. Now, we have some Old Testament examples of when prayer provided power in a situation. One of my favorite examples is from Daniel. Daniel, and I'll read from verse 3 of chapter 9, Daniel 9, 3. Daniel said, I set my face to the Lord to seek him by prayer and and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. He said, I set my face to the Lord to seek him by prayer and supplication. Now, in verse 20 of, of the same chapter, he says, while I was speaking, praying, and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord, while I was doing this praying and supplication, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. At the beginning of your supplications, the command went out. When did the command go out? At the beginning of Daniel's supplications, Daniel began to ask, and God immediately answered. At the beginning, at the beginning of your asking, your supplications, the command went out, and I have come to tell you. So he said, I am here because you're praying. You prayed. God sent me in answer to that prayer. The moment that you began praying, I was sent. He said, I've come to tell you for your greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision, skill and understanding as a result of prayer. So he began to seek the Lord. And the moment he began praying, God began sending answers. And this is under the old, the first covenant, 
under the first covenant. You and I, the Bible says that we have a better covenant made on better promises. You and I, we, we don't have to wait for an angel to bring me the answer. I have the Holy Spirit dwelling in me. He can give me the answer immediately. I, but I need to know that God is hearing me the moment I pray, and he's responding. Daniel 10 He says in verse 1, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. So he was, he again went into a time of praying. He said, I saw this. It came clear to me what the scripture said should be, but I saw that it wasn't in manifestation like it should be. So I set myself to seek God again. So he said, I was mourning three full weeks. He set his heart to understand and his voice, his words, his voice was heard because verse 12, again, an angel comes to him and says to him, do not fear Daniel For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. Now, he'd been praying three weeks. And the angel now appears to him and says, from the first day you started praying, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But he says, I was withstood by the king of Persia for 21 days. And then Michael, the chief uh, angel, came to help me. Uh, and so he, this angel was delayed in the message being delivered to Daniel. But he says, from the moment that you began to pray, I was sent. So hear me. From the moment you began to pray, things begin to change. God hears and he begins to send the answer to the situation and bring effect of a change in that situation. In this, we see that the enemy was able to to try to slow down the answer to his prayer or him knowing it, but the answer went into motion from the moment that Daniel prayed. Another example we have is in the story of Elijah calling down the fire from heaven in 1 Kings chapter 18. It came to pass, verse 36, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all things, all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know you are the Lord God, and that you have turned their hearts, and you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice. So he said, hear me, and God answered immediately. The answer begins immediately. The answer begins immediately. I'm talking about your prayers. I'm talking about my prayers. I'm talking about you and I. Our prayers, your prayers are answered immediately. God's not slow. He's not slow to respond. He's not deaf. He can hear and he hears your in, he hears your prayers, he hears your entreaties, he hears your supplications and he is answering. Elisha prayed for the Shunammites and I'm talking about prayers making power available. We see the prayer of Daniel made the response of God available. The prayer of Elijah made the power of God available. God answered by fire. Elisha prayed for the Shunammite son who had died. His, he, his, there was no life in his body. But 2 Kings chapter 4, he went in. Elisha went in, shut the door behind the two of them. Verse 33, prayed to the Lord. Verse 34, he went up and lay on the child, put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, his hands on his hands, stretched himself out on the child, and the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house and again went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. So we see that God answered and brought life back into the Shunammite son, but through the interaction through the entreaty, through the supplication of Elisha. Job prayed for his friends, and the situation turned around not just for them, but for him too. 
It says in Job 42, 10, the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. When he prayed for his friends, God restored Job's losses. There was such a power supply that was made available when he prayed for his friends that it affected his restoration. You know, Jesus teaches us about prayer in Matthew chapter 6. He says in verse 5, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners and the streets that they may be seen of men. And assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. That's what they get, to be seen. Okay, you've been seen. That's all you get out of that prayer. He said, but you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. God will answer and reward you openly. And when you pray, don't use vain petitions or repetitions as the heathen do, repeating the same thing over and over again, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Don't lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. So we see a few different things here. We see, according to verse 6, that God's desire and intent is to reward us openly. God wants to reward us. In, when I say reward, He wants to answer our prayers. He wants you to bring forth much fruit. It glorifies the Father when you bring forth fruit in prayer. So asking what you will and receiving it is called fruit. That glorifies your Father. John chapter 15, if you abide in me, Jesus said in verse 7, and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples. It pleases God to answer our prayers. He desires to. He's not sitting up there saying, you can ask me, but I don't know if I like you today. That's not what God's doing. God's saying, you're my child. Come ask and receive that your joy may be full. It pleases the Father. It glorifies Him. But there are, are in this understanding there are a couple of things I want to, to emphasize to us here. He desires to answer our prayers. He wants to, and he emphasizes here as we forgive. He emphasizes it in, in the prayer that he gave as an outline, and then he emphasizes it again afterward because as you forgive. In the New Testament, Jesus established something to his disciples in, those, in that conversation he had with them right before he went to the cross. We see it in, in, in John 14, 15, and 16. He establishes a way of loving as a new standard. He says, you've heard it said, you know, you're supposed to love uh, as people, uh, love as you love yourself, but I'm telling you, I want you to love people the way I've loved you. So he set a new standard. And I want to read this from Ephesians 4, 32, because there's a new standard of forgiveness for us. It says here in Ephesians 4, 32, and this is the Amplified, and become useful and helpful and kind to one another, tenderhearted, compassionate, understanding, lovinghearted, forgiving one another readily and freely as God in Christ forgave you. So this is the standard for us in the forgiving. I forgive as freely as God forgave me, as completely as God forgave me, as 
quickly as God forgave me. I forgive. This is my standard. I am to forgive at the same way, the same level, the same um, application of forgiveness that God used toward me by forgiving me in Christ. Jesus emphasizes this here in this teaching on prayer, and he also emphasized it in his teaching on faith in Mark 11. He went through this, this, this grand, uh, exquisite teaching on faith, this I mean, so clear. This is how faith operates. And then he followed that up with this in verse 25. Whenever you stand praying, this is the Amplified, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him and let it drop. Leave it. Let it go. Anything against anyone, this is our new standard of forgiving. This is the standard for the believer of forgiving. Why? Because we want our prayers to be effective and we want our faith to be effective. And so he said, forgiving one another freely. He says here, drop it, leave it, let it go in order that your father who is in heaven may also forgive you your own failings and shortcomings and let them drop. So this praying is important that we're operating in love when we're praying. You cannot be effective in prayer or faith without your love walk. You're going to have to maintain your love walk with God and with your fellow believers and with others so that you can effectively communicate. So he says, forgive if, if you have, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him forgive him. Another thing that I want to add to and that, that we see Jesus adding in that conversation that he had with his disciples, he said, before now you've asked nothing in my name, but from this point on you are asking in my name. He said it in John 14, whatever you ask the father in my name, that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son. He said it in John 15, 16, if you love me, keep my commandments. I will pray the father, uh, at, that's not the right verse. John 16, 24, until now you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. So he said in that prayer that he gave in, in to his disciples previously, he said, this is the standard of praying. But then he added, now you're going to pray in my name. So asking the father in his name. When we understand that prayer provides power, it provides strength, we'll see and clearly identify what happened when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was being tempted. He was in that place under so much pressure. And what did he do? He prayed. He identifies to us that prayer provides a means of strength to us spiritually, a spiritual strength so that we don't enter into temptation. He said to them, uh, pray that you may not enter into temptation. Hallelujah. In verse 46 of Luke 22, he said it again in Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he said this Praying provides strength so that you don't enter into temptation. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of grace and supplication, and he'll help us to pray as we learn to follow his lead in prayer. I am so thankful for the help of the Holy Spirit and for how he leads us to pray effectively. This 12-part series on effective prayer is available on our website, buildfaith.net. You can get the CD series. You can get the downloads on audio. You can get the study guide as well. We also have it free on our YouTube channel. You can go watch it again there. We have so many more resources available for you there in our website, buildfaith.net. We encourage you to take advantage of that, connect with that, come and be a part of what God is doing at our church. Faith Builders in Little Rock is... Uh, 10500 West Markham, and then we have our campus in DeSoto, Kansas, 8390 Peoria Street. We welcome you to come and be a part. Remember to build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God. 
The Amplified Bible tells us in James 5.16, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic, and it's working. Our prayers are powerful instruments for God's power to affect change in our lives. Through our relationship with Jesus Christ, we are equipped to pray effectively. The series Effective Prayer is exactly what you need to help you identify the accuracy and advantage you have in prayer. In this series, Pastors Philip and Michelle Steele explain the various types of prayer and how to apply them. The Holy Spirit helps us in prayer. The legal position of praying in Jesus' name. The difference between supplication and intercession and much more. This insightful 12-part series is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $20. In addition to the teaching series, you can also get Pastor Steele's book, Refusing the Care. In this book, Pastor Steele provides biblical truth and practical insight to help you resist worry and refuse the cares of everyday life with an understanding of how faith provides a foundation against anxiety. With practical illustrations, Pastor Pastor Steele relates lessons he's learned as the Lord revealed the danger of allowing cares to prop the door open to the enemy. Available for $15, this book will help you recognize wrong perceptions and help keep the door closed to carrying care. Don't miss this special offer. The 12-part series Effective Prayer in various formats includes a study guide with all the verses and teaching points to help you study along and strengthen yourself in truth. Also, the book Refusing the Care will provide you with a guide to keep you out of care and anxiety. Call the number on your screen now or go to buildfaith.net to order. Call or go online now. What is Healing School? It is a designated time to learn about God's provision for the healing of our bodies. Whether you are facing a physical attack against your body or want to build up your spiritual immune system to remain strong and healthy, this weekly class is for you. Join Pastor Philip Still each Tuesday at 1030 a.m. at 10500 West Markham in Little Rock or online at buildfaith.net's live stream. Each class is archived and available in a playlist on our YouTube channel at Faith Builders International. Classes are free and open to the public. Join us this week at Healing School. This is Pastor Philip Steele, and I want to invite you out to Faith Builders Church, where people's faith is being built by the Word of God and the Holy Spirit is moving in the lives of His people. You can visit us at either of our locations, either at 10500 Markham, right there in the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, or 8390 Peoria Street in the city of DeSoto, Kansas. We would love to see you at either of our locations. We have a full service ministry. We have children's ministry from nursery age all the way up to teenage. We have ministry for men, ministry for women. The Holy Spirit is moving and people's lives are being changed. I hope to see you soon at either of our locations. Until then, build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God.